Hey there, I'm Zach and I make things for Ableton Live. Today I want to talk about a sound effect device that I made a while back that I spent some time on this week. Um, I kind of cleaned it up and simplified it and you know every time I get into this and start noodling with this device I just wish I had pressed record. Those are some heavy sounds. I'm glad I'm recording. There's something about it that, to me at least, makes cool noises. And I wanted to get into that, do a little deep dive today, and show what this, uh, this little guy is capable of. Okay, so what is it? It's called Tap Pan Zeit. It's a little play on words. There was a bridge, uh, and it's kind of what it does. Um, Okay, so let's let's check it out. So uh, I have it next to a kick device that I made, uh, and let's just listen to it. Okay, well, so I heard the kick, and then I heard three echoes after that. Let's try again. Okay, and so what we've got is this taps is the number of echoes. And so what this device does is you set the number of echoes that you want, and then you kind of shape around that how you want those echoes to be and i'll show you about what that means so let's drop this taps to one and i'll hit the kick again so we hear the original and the second one and so uh, let's take a little tour over here to this side of the device this is the dry volume let's turn that down okay and the wet volume we can turn that down but we'll keep them both at 100 percent for this so this is just give me, giving me one echo uh, at a quarter note delay, uh, and there's no feedback. And so if I play with this feedback, if I turn it up here, then it's now we're entering the world of a normal delay effect. Uh, but that's not really what I intended to do here, um, but maybe we'll come back to feedback later. Okay, so with the dry and wet at 100%, taps, let's put it at a number like, uh, let's say seven. So now we'll hear seven quarter notes. Okay, kind of sounds like a little Blue Monday intro. Um, but maybe I want, it, I want those uh, echoes to go quieter as they go on. So I can use these three graphs to really shape uh, some parameters of how those echoes are happening. And so we see volume here. Uh, and maybe I want them to go sort of left and right in a, in a pattern. Or maybe start off far left. Okay, that's kind of fun. Um, still fairly normal, but this this last one that I'll show is really the reason why I made this plugin in the first place. I wanted to make like I think like a bouncing marble sound and I thought well this is the way to do it. So what we've got is is we've got control over uh, the time factor and so we've got the time base here in this case is a quarter note. Uh, the time factor we've had at a hundred percent of that so each tap is uh, separated by a hundred percent of that quarter note. Uh, but what we can do is we can maybe speed it up uh, as each tap happens. So let's listen to that. Okay. And then uh, with the Alt key, you can uh, choose different curves. And so maybe we want it to go fast, like quicker. And so there's still seven taps happening, seven echoes happening. And so maybe we can crank that up uh, to like, I don't know, 34. So you can see when you increase the number of taps, what you're doing is subdividing these graphs into that number. Uh, and then each tap is uh, taking it, its step there. So going to 34 taps, we're getting a lot more time overall, a lot more duration overall. Then if we just went to three, that's it. But see, by the time we get to the second hit, uh, it's already very quick. And so the last two happen uh, one after the other. Okay, so uh, that was a little example of 
some interesting stuff you can do with this. One thing you'll find in this device and a lot of other devices that I make is this little presets panel here. Uh, and so if you hold down shift and click one of these squares, now you've saved this configuration of this device into a preset. And uh, so then a single click can recall a preset. This is a basic three hit. And then if I just click on the second one, this is back to where we were. Um, and this preset number here is actually a parameter that you can automate. And so this may give you a capability in that you'd want to take advantage of with uh, perhaps you had a whole slew of presets and you had uh, something sweeping through them or stepping through them or something like that as part of the makeup of your song. Uh, and I think that's a pretty powerful concept here. So maybe I'll just take a, little, a couple little detours here. I'm going to start back with the basic setup. Um, I'm using Knobbler here and I've got two device preset buttons, one for this kick drum sound. Um, so I can like, for example, take away the uh, attack on it, um, maybe make it last longer. Okay, that'll be cool. Um, so, okay, I can play around with that kick sound then and I can tap this one and get to the, the tap hands height. And so uh, I'm just gonna noodle a little bit and we'll see where it goes. So let's go uh, longer, like nine. Where can we go from here? It's probably worth mentioning that I've got a, a limiter uh, right after the tap enzyme. Uh, sometimes with the number of echoes, especially if you're in, uh, if you're behind something with a lot of bass frequencies, uh, that can get super loud. And so the limiter kind of helps keep things sane and keeps me from having to work worry about this gain knob as I'm recording a video here. So uh, just wanted to call up that that can be super helpful to just drop a limiter there. Um, I set the ceiling down to minus six-ish and leave everything else alone and it works really well here. Let's, uh, let's bring in some feedback. Those are some heavy sounds. I'm glad I'm recording. Also crazy, holy shit. that one. Where have we been? All right. That's Radio Cuckoo. Radio Cuckoo right there. That's Radio Cuckoo. Okay, well, hopefully that was an interesting introduction to tap pan zeit um give it a try see what you can do with it that was just a kick drum so let me know in the comments and 
Until next time, happy tap and Bye.